What is up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel guys. In today's video guys, I'm going to be showing you how to use InDesign for creating portfolios. You can also use it for creating design boards such as mood boards, concept boards, material boards. You can also use it to create presentation packages. You can also use it to create resumes and there's really a whole bunch of things that you can use it for. So without further ado guys, let's just dive right into the tutorial. So the first time that you open InDesign, you're gonna see something similar to this and yours might look a little bit different uh, if you have a different version of InDesign, but it doesn't really matter. What you wanna do right after you open it is you wanna go to Edit, Preferences, and then you're gonna to wanna to go to units and increments and you're gonna to wanna to go to autocorrect. So you just wanna make sure that you are in the language that you are gonna be adding your text in so that your grammar check uh, works correctly. So we're just gonna leave it at English, click OK, and we're just gonna create a new file. I'm gonna create a custom size. So I'm just gonna click on custom and the units, I want it to be inches. So this is a 17 by 11 and I want it to be in landscape orientation and we're gonna leave everything just how it is. It's not really relevant for this video. So we're just gonna create, oh, and by the way, you see that there is a margin option. So you will see that once we create a document, a margin will be there. So it's right there. It's just there as a guide so that if you are adding any images or anything, uh, you have the same amount of blank space on each side of your page. Um, you can delete it if you want, but I don't think that it's a problem, so we're just gonna leave it there. And this uh, margin, it's not gonna print, so it's just there as a guide. Uh, once you're here, if you wanna change the size of this page, or if you wanna change the margin or anything, the orientation, you can do that here on the right on your properties panel. For now, we're just gonna leave it like that. And you wanna go to uh, layout, pages, and add page. So that's how you add pages to your document. The very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a rectangle. So you wanna go to the rectangle tool and you're just gonna drag uh, a rectangle and there you go. Uh, if you go to the right side, you will see the properties for the tool that you are working with. So you click on fill and right now it has no fill. If you choose paper, it'll create a white fill, black, of course it'll be black. And then InDesign has this weird ugly colors that they pre-selected for you, but we're not gonna be using this because they are very ugly. <laughs> so you wanna go to the color palette here um, on the top and you wanna go to these three lines. You're gonna choose, um, I normally use either CMYK or RGB. So just a very quick uh, explanation of what this is. If you choose uh, CMYK, it means that the colors that you're gonna be able to choose are gonna be uh, for printing. So if you wanna print this, um, this document, you wanna go to CMYK. If you don't wanna print it and you just wanna post it online or maybe you just wanna keep it on your computer, then you can use RGB because it has a wider range of colors. And the reason for that is that in your computer, uh, you have light coming out of your computer. So that allows for you or for the computer to be able to create more colors. But if you wanna print a document, the printer won't have as many colors because the printer has no light. So I really hope that that explains uh, what is this all about. So for now, we're just gonna choose um, RGB colors. So I already have a color that I wanna use and I have the values for that color. So if you wanna save this color um, so that you use it later, you're gonna go here to the three lines and you're gonna add it to swatches and it's gonna be added. So when you go to your swatches panel, you're gonna see the color down there. If you double click on it and you uncheck this box, 
you can actually give it a name and you can actually drag it all the way to make it the full size and that's how you would have a page that it's not white so it has a different color for now i'm just going to do half because i want to add an image to this side so let's do that you want to go to file place and then you're going to select your image for now we're going to do this one so once you're here once it brings it here you're going to click and you're going to drag and then it's going to uh, make the image the size that you want. InDesign works a little bit different than other programs when you are adding images to your page. So basically every image that you add to InDesign will have a frame. So the image will be inside that frame. So the frame is this blue border that it's around the image. If you actually click on the middle of the image uh, a donut will appear. If you click on the donut and then you drag, uh, you're gonna see a brown border. So that is the image. So it can be a little bit confusing uh, if you've never worked with this program, but you gotta have to play with it to be able to understand what I'm talking about. So if you want to resize the image and resize the border uh, proportionally, you wanna type Ctrl and Shift every time that you want to resize your image. Because if you don't do this, like let's say I just grab it from here. So right now I'm just making my border bigger, but my image is still uh, small. So it's not moving with the image. And if I actually type on my image and I wanna make it bigger, now you cannot see it because the border is small. So if you wanna change both at the same time, you just type Ctrl and Shift at the same time and then you just can resize it. So I'm just gonna move it here because I wanna, I want it to fit uh, on half of the page. To zoom out, it's Ctrl minus, and if you wanna zoom in, it's Ctrl plus. So right now, what I wanna do actually is, I just wanna cut this. So I'm just gonna cut the frame because I want it to be the same size as my document. So there you go. Um, and you can move the image that's inside it just to show a little bit more of the kitchen that I wanna add here. So this is just my introduction page. And you see how that margin is still there. That margin is not gonna print, but if it's bothering you, what you wanna do is type W on your keyboard and it'll go away. So this is the preview of how your document will look once you print it out or once you export it as a pdf so now guys we're gonna add text uh, so you want to go here to your tools and you're gonna click on the type tool you're gonna click on your screen and you're just gonna drag to make a toolbox and you can basically type whatever you want so we're just gonna do mayor residence you're gonna type ctrl a to select the whole text and you can change the size of the text uh, so we're just going to make it a little bit bigger and then uh, if you go to the selection tool it'll unactivate the text uh, tool so you can actually resize the box uh, for your text and you can actually move your text around so we're just going to do that and then we're going to do another text box and i'm actually just going to paste uh, from this document that I already created. So I'm here just gonna Ctrl A to select it, Ctrl C to copy it, and Ctrl V to paste it, Ctrl A to select it again, because I wanna change the size of this. So let's make it a little bit smaller. There you go, I think that looks good. And then you can also resize the box so I think that looks pretty good. And there you go, we have an introduction page. You see guys that I did this uh, drawing of a house. I think it's really cool. Like, I don't know, but I really love this thing that I did for, for my portfolio projects. If you've watched my portfolio uh, video, you will see that I do this in one of my portfolios. So right now I'm just gonna, um, copy and paste it 
but I will show you how to do it if you want to do something like this. So there I paste it and then I can resize it. So once again, control and shift while you resize it so that it's uh, not distorted. So there you go. I think that looks pretty good. You just, there you go. So I actually want to move this down so that I can, so you can also use your arrows on your keyboard to move uh, things around. So there you go. So I did this uh, little drawing here in InDesign and I actually did it with the line tool. So it's very easy, you just manually, you know, draw whatever you want. And if you type shift while you are creating a line, it'll create a straight line. So you can create anything. It's a little bit time consuming, but I think it's just a cool feature. So anyway, that is that. So now guys, we're just gonna go to the second page. Um, what I wanna do now is I actually wanna use this rectangle again. So I'm just gonna Control C to copy it and then Control V. And then I'm just gonna drag it with my mouse. And I want it to be the whole uh, page. So there you go. And now I'm gonna create a mood board. So file, place. And then I'm gonna select the images that I want my mood board to have. So it's that one, that one, that one. So you can type control if you wanna select more than one image at the same time. You just click on open and then every time that you click, it's gonna drop one image for you. What I want to add here is a PDF file. So a lot of you guys work with AutoCAD or Revit or whatever program you use whenever you have your floor plans ready and your elevations or whatever it is. Uh, you typically export it as a PDF. So if you want to add those PDFs into a presentation um, package or something like what I'm doing right now, uh, you won't be able to do it with a lot of other programs. Like if you're doing this on Canva, it won't let you add PDF files. So that's one of the things why I love to use InDesign because it allows me to import PDFs and to show my floor plans. The way that you add PDFs, uh, you go to file and then you just go to place and then you basically just choose your PDFs. Your PDFs. Um, I wanna do the floor plan. So open and then you just click on it. And then remember, control shift uh, so that the image resizes uh, with the frame. And I actually wanted to have a color background. So I'm gonna take this same rectangle that I used for my mood board, control copy and then control paste it. And I'm just gonna send it to the back. And there you go. If you um, are working with AutoCAD student version, you will have this text on the very edge of your document that it says produced by an Autodesk student version. If you wanna do this for a presentation, you wanna get rid of that. So the way that you do it is you're gonna import your PDF. So file, place, and then you're gonna select it. You open it and you wanna resize this because... So if you resize the frame without resizing the image, it'll actually hide part of your image. So it comes really handy when you want to delete a part of your image and you don't wanna show it there. So guys, basically that's it. Like I just really wanted to show you a very quick tutorial. It's super easy to use in design. And basically this is what we use it for, to import uh, construction drawings, to make our design boards, mood boards, concept boards, material boards. Uh, you can also use it to do resumes, portfolios. It's super easy to use. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I really hope that you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I felt like I was going super fast. So I hope that everything was well explained. 
If not, let me know down in the comments if you have any questions. And as always, guys, I will see you on next week's video. Bye-bye.